everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I have Maria Trolles Flora and my Prisma Colors because today we're going to continue with the adorable little fairy house in this book and we are going to color the cute little hilltop that the house is sitting on top of and I am going to show you how to create lots of depth with a dramatic pop of color. Y'all know that I've really struggled with trying to choose colors for the hilltop, but I finally have a plan and I've mapped out my plan for the whole entire page. I've taken lots of notes and I am ready to move forward. <laughs> If you check the description box down below, I will have links down there for my email list, my Facebook group, my Etsy shop, and my Patreon if you'd like to support me there. I also now have channel membership. If you would like to find more information out about that, you can click the link below this video. Okay, so here is the page. In the last video, we finished these little flowers here, and it was the second part of the previous video where I just kind of shared my thought process as I moved throughout the page. So in this video, we're gonna color this hilltop here, and I will be sharing my thought process as I go through, but I do really this time have a plan as I move forward and color it. I am going to work on creating lots of depth, but I am going to add some really dramatic pops of color throughout the whole thing. So again, here is my swatch chart, and I'm going to explain to you how I chose the colors that I chose. Now, if you look at this page, you can see that it does have a lot of green. So when I colored the treehouse here long ago in a previous video, I used lots of olivier looking greens. So here, when I did these leaves in the last video, I used different undertones from the other greens so that they all come together really nicely, but I'm still staying within the same color family and just bringing balance throughout the page. So now, here for this hilltop I have decided that I'm going to color it green I know I was kind of going back and forth whether I should make it look like dirt or make it look like grass we are going to make it look like grass but it's going to look a little bit different because I really want these trees that are sort of brighter shades of browns with a pop of I think I put salmon pink in here so it's got a little bit of a pop of highlight in these trees but I want to do the same here I want to create a whole lot of depth especially over here behind the trees. I want to create a little bit of a reflection between the water and then where this hilltop starts. And then I wanna put some pops of highlight throughout wherever I feel like it's going to look really good. But as I move forward, I'll just kind of share my thought process and where I'm going with this and why I'm doing what I'm doing. So here's the swatch chart. And I did already choose my colors. Like I said, I do have a plan. I've got lots of notes. I wrote everything down for the rest of the page. So I did take some colors that I've already used on the page, but I kind of mixed them up just a little bit. And then I chose another color to really intensify all of that extra added depth and dimension. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. So to start, I have just three colors and those colors are the kelp green, which I don't think I've used yet. And for my mid-tone, I'm gonna use the Kelly green, which is down here. And then for the pop of highlight, I grabbed the chartreuse because I wanted to be a little bit extra daring here. And I wanted to add a little bit of brightness to this page that has a whole lot of more muted colors. So those are the colors we're gonna start with. And then I am going to bring in another color and show you how I'm going to add all that extra depth and really make these trees stand out so that it looks like they're laying on top of the hilltop. Okay, so I have a whole lot of space to cover here. So if you've watched some of my videos previously, you know that I always keep my pencils pretty, pretty sharp. But in this case, I'm going to be going more so in a circular motion and kind of spreading the colors around. So the tips of my pencils aren't super, super sharp. And my highlight color, I want to keep a little bit more blunt because I'm not trying to get in any small, small spaces. Now, when I come in with my darkest color, I am going to sharpen that pencil super, super sharp because I'm gonna have to come in here behind these trees. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna take my chartreuse and I'm going to add this color wherever I think I'm going to want it. So I'm gonna come down here where the water meets the hilltop and I want to add a little bit of this just right here at the edge because I want to try to create a little bit of a reflection between the hilltop and the water. And I may change this up as I go, 
But for now, I really just want to preserve this area so that I don't take my other colors and accidentally go into the wrong spaces. Okay, so I think I'm going to want quite a bit of this color right here in this space. Now my plan is to do a darker background up there. I'm not gonna reveal all of my plans right now. You'll have to watch the next video. But I'm just gonna add a little bit of this here because I want to make it look like there is quite a bit of a reflection here. So instead of going straight to my midtone, I think I'm gonna take my kelp green and I'm gonna start laying this color in all of the spaces here where this tree is laying over the hilltop. And I think the green with the brown in front of it is going to be really pretty and it's gonna make for a really nice contrast. But all of these areas here are gonna be super dark and this is not the last color that I'm going to be using here in these spaces. And I will show you a little bit later in the video exactly what I'm gonna do. This is going to act as just a first layer. And then I'm going to be coming back with another color that's really going to intensify this and create all that extra added depth. But I wanna to try to get this as dark as I possibly can because I really wanna make it look like these trees are to the front of the hilltop. This is a really nice dark color because there are some spaces where when I colored the tree, I went a little bit out of the lines. So by doing this, you're not gonna be able to even tell. When you're coloring and you do things like that or you go a little bit out of the lines, there are always fixes for that. You could always take another color and just put it right over the color where you went over and it hides it really well. And as I was coloring this page, I did notice that there were a couple places that I had missed, like in the plants and the leaves in the last video. So I went through and I just fixed all of that before I started filming this video. So if you noticed it in the last video, it's all fixed now. <laughs> At least I think it's all fixed. Now here around this ladder, I am going to make sure I get quite a bit of this color in here right on the edges because again, I wanna make it look like the ladder is sitting to the front of the hilltop. Now, originally my plan was to color the ladder and the boat green. And so that is the only part of this page I'm still trying to plan out and decide what I'm gonna do. So all of these parts here that are a lot closer towards the bottom of the tree, I want to be a lot darker and I'm gonna use a little bit less pressure here as I come down closer towards the chartreuse. I have to come back with my mid-tone and add it in there. So I'm trying to leave a little bit of open space for my mid-tone. If you're following along with this and you wanna do your mid-tone first, you can go ahead and do your mid-tone first, but this was just a little bit easier for me in this case because I wanna make sure I get my darkest color in here behind this tree. If you feel like you want to sharpen your lead on this particular color to be a little bit sharper, you can totally do that, but I'm not really having an issue getting into these spaces. I think it's working out really nicely. And remember, this is not going to be my darkest color. When I come in with that dark color and I just want to shade lightly and create all that extra added depth I am going to make sure the tip of my pencil is much sharper for that color but I feel like when I have a little bit more of a blunt tip I can cover a little bit more space okay so I'm just gonna go over all these spaces and I think I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit more and add a second layer and this appears to be a little bit darker I want to keep the darkness a little bit more towards the top I think and then it can lighten up as we come down but I wanna get a couple layers of this color down there. I don't wanna use all of the tooth of the paper though because I still want to come back with my darkest color. This is probably all going to be filled in and then I'll just lighten up just a little bit by coming up with my pencil and using a little bit less pressure. And I wanted a little bit of a pop of color right in there where I had laid the chartreuse, so I'm gonna leave that section alone. But this one, I think I'm gonna fill all the way in. And then here too and all here and then I do want to add some of this color right in here right along the branches oh it looks like I forgot the little stem here that goes with this flower so I'll have to come back and do that but all around all of these leaves this color is pretty close to what I used so I am going to have to come in with the color that I'm going to pull a little bit later and I'm gonna to have to get into all of these individual spaces 
and that color will create the separation there between the leaves and this hilltop. Okay, so I think it looks pretty good so far. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Kelly Green, and I am going to blend some of this color in there, and these colors are pretty similar. The Kelly Green is a bit lighter, and these two colors look really pretty together. But I'm just gonna come in here and blend some of this out, lightening it up just a little bit, and I'm gonna bring this all the way down into that chartreuse where I wanted to create just a little bit of reflection where the water is, and I'm just filling in all of the space that I had left in between these trees, and we definitely still don't have enough layers down here, so we're gonna keep coming back with these colors. Oh, I love it so far, but wait till we get a little bit further you're gonna see how dramatic this looks when I come back and add these other colors now I think I do need to sharpen my kelp green because I do need to get right in here and add a layer of this color and it's a pretty small space and I'm gonna come in here and add more layers all in and around where the ladder is and this is going to darken it up just a little bit more before coming in with a darker color. Now the darker color is not going to be a green. <laughs> I'll tell you that much at this point. But it's very important that I get quite a few layers of this darker green down here because I do, like I said, want it to look really dramatic. And I am using harder pressure now to really get that color down there. Look at how this is just changing the whole page so dramatically. I absolutely love it. It's making the trees look as though they are setting behind the hilltop. It's adding all that extra added depth and it's really lifting those trees. I may come in right here and add a little bit of chartreuse. I think I want a little bit of a pop right in there. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love it. Okay, so now that I did that and I really like it, I'm thinking that I might <laughs> add this color in a few more places. Okay, so now I want to lift up the chartreuse down here at the bottom just a little bit more and see how your ideas change as you go through your page and just continue to color. But oh my gosh, I think this is going to change up this page so dramatically from what it was. Oh, that looks so cool. Let me come in here with my Kelly Green and I'm going to need to add another layer of this and blend it into that chartreuse. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. And I was really hesitant about using the chartreuse, but I'm so glad that I did because as you can see, it's made a huge difference. So you can see how the color just darkens up so much if you just continue to keep adding those layers. If you're a beginner and you're watching this video, this is what makes colored pencils so fun. As you just continue to add all of the layers to your coloring page, you will notice how things just start to actually come to life. It just looks so neat. Now I want to experiment a little bit more with my chartreuse. I'm gonna add a little bit right in here. Oh, I think that chartreuse looks so cool up against the blue. Okay, so now I'm getting a little carried away with this chartreuse, but it makes such a huge difference. I'm going to add more and more of it because the difference in these colors as they come together really gives it that dramatic look that I was going for. So I didn't think I was gonna be using this much of it, but y'all that have been watching my videos for quite some time, you know <laughs> that I just change it up as I go. Okay, so I have my Kelly Green, which is my mid-tone, and I'm going to come in here and pull this color right down in there to that pop of chartreuse. I'm going to do that on every one of these sections, but look how this is just really coming to life now. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, so I need to grab my chartreuse here and add this color in all these spaces where I decided to add a little bit more. It makes such a difference. Look at that. And when I blend it into that Kelly Green, the blend of those two colors is so pretty. See how I blend it into that other color here and I just pull up and it kind of brightens up that Kelly Green. And don't ever be afraid to experiment with your colors like that and try to create blends of two different colors 
colors. It's so much fun to do. Okay, so before I come up here, I am going to grab my kelp green and I'm really going to try to darken some of these areas up as much as I can. So I just want to make sure I really darken this up everywhere that the tree is touching this background of the hilltop. And you can see as I lay more and more color down there, it's really just starting to elevate everything and make it look so much more realistic. I probably could have gotten away with these two colors, just the chartreuse and the kelp green, but I really honestly didn't know I was gonna be using so much of the chartreuse, but I love it. And after I come back and I do all of this here, this page is going to pop so much because it originally just had a bunch of muted colors on it. And I've worked so hard on creating balance through this whole entire page and bright pops of color. But I think that doing this hilltop has made the biggest difference, especially with this color. It almost kind of looks a little bit spooky. <laughs> but I love it. Okay, so let's come up here and finish off the top. So I have my mid-tone, which is the Kelly Green, and I'm going to add some of this color here. Now I may have used Kelly Green in the door, so I'm gonna have to figure out here how to change this up a little bit. Maybe I want a little bit more chartreuse here. Yeah, let's go ahead and add the chartreuse under the door. Now you can see that I am doing things a little bit different than I normally do, because in most cases, under the door, I would be adding a bit of a shadow. So I probably am going to need that other color because it is going to have to be a little bit darker under there to make it look like the house is sitting on top of the hilltop. So let me come over here where I've got a lot of brown and I could add the kelp green in here and then right here along the tree and then over the top of the ladybug. Now I haven't colored the ladybug yet so I have to be really careful not to go in that space and of course my ladybug is probably just going to be red. That'll be a super quick color. And over here where I've got these leaves, I think I am definitely going to need that other color because this color is too close to the color of the leaves and so it's really not going to stand out. Okay, so now I have my Kelly green and I'm just gonna pull these colors through and pull it into the chartreuse. Just go in a circular motion and pull the colors around. Maybe I could do a little bit of a blend here with the chartreuse all around the flowers and make this look a little bit different but I did use the chartreuse in the leaves, so I am definitely going to have to come back with that other color. So let me just work on the bottom down here just a little bit, and we're just working on creating more depth, getting this color down on the paper, adding those layers, and just intensifying that color just a little bit more. Okay, so now I really wanna just get that chartreuse down there and add that pop of color there. And I'm just gonna go over all of this and really blend it all out. And then in the areas where I added the other colors, I'm just going to create a blend of those colors because I am going to grab that other color and show you how to create all that extra added depth. Here's my swatch chart, and what I decided to do is I decided to grab the sepia. And it is a brown, it's a super dark, dark color. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that to create a bunch of extra added depth and see where this goes. Okay, so right here where I have this leaf laying here, I wanna make sure that I come all around the leaf and the flower, and this is going to help to create a little bit of separation between these two objects. Now this color is super dark after you get a couple layers down there, but it's still a different shade than what I have in the house or what I used in these trees. So it's just gonna help things really stand out. So over here where I've got the tree laying in front, I'm gonna use this color and I'm going to really intensify these areas. And for here, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit more right into where the flower is. And then I'm gonna grab my kelp green and I'm gonna blend it right into the sepia. But I'm gonna be really careful not to go into the area where I have laid the chartreuse. Okay, so now I have my sepia again, and I'm going to use it to really intensify all of these areas in here. And I think this is going to help me to create that really dramatic look that I'm going for. Now over here where I've got the house setting on top, I am going to add this color in here because I really want it to look as though that house is setting on top of the hillside. 
And then I'm gonna take the kelp green to go over this color and I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit, going in a very small circular motion. And I'm just pulling it down a little bit into the chartreuse. And then I'm gonna grab the Kelly green and blend it out even more because the Kelly green is going to blend into that chartreuse a lot better but I still have that pop of color right in there under the door, which is the look that I was going for. But I'm gonna take this color and I'm going to go in all of the areas right around the tree. And I am going to actually speed this up a little bit while I do this so y'all can see it start to lift even more as I create all that extra depth. just going over all of it and making sure that I have covered all of the white of the paper and the paper in this book is really really nice you could add so many layers I'm also going over all of the areas where I added that sepia so this way I could have a blend of the two colors but you could see the huge difference that it's made okay y'all it's all done oh my gosh I cannot believe what that chartreuse did it really made it so so dramatic but that is how you add lots of extra added depth and then still have that dramatic pop of color i was able to add that pop of color with the chartreuse and then the sepia really helped to add all that extra depth and dimension and now i really want to come back and add a lot more depth to the house using that sepia and see what I can do, but I think I can make it look quite a bit more dramatic. Now that I've done this part here, <laughs> I'm thinking I wanna go back to other areas of the page and add a little something more. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if you wanna see that, but everything you've seen me use in this video will be linked in the description box below. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring, bye.